All right, welcome back to another block in boot camp. Today we're going to be looking at drawing creatures. The block in process is all about straight lines and using uh, line of sight. And what that means is you get your reference on the left hand side here and you're going to line it up to the right at the exact same size. So the width and the height are identical and this helps you to just develop the hand eye coordination to draw what you see. First step very first step for beginners and for even advanced drawers uh, is to do the envelope. The envelope here is going to be a polygonal shape that basically touches uh, six points on this triceratops. And the envelope is loose. It is a guess. It is a place to start because when we first start creating our artwork, we really have no idea about anything other than we're holding a pencil and there's a piece of paper in front of us and we want to end up with something that looks undeniably like a triceratops. So we put in our envelope and in this case I felt it was pretty good and I'm actually trying to get these done as fast as I encourage my students to do so in class which is get the envelope done and then just start cutting away the little slices uh, where you're going to see more detail. Now, when I say detail, I don't mean the claws, the knees, the slight bend in the horn or the beak, or whatever these things have up front. No, I mean the long legs. Like, where are the legs in general as a rectangle? What is, where, what is this thing standing on? Is it level ground? Am I looking at it? Like, is it, is it, is it running? Is it, where is its weight? What is this thing that I'm looking at with long lines? No curved lines. And you can break outside of your envelope like I'm doing here with the tail. The envelope is meant just as a way for us to figure out uh, relational sizes, proportion. Uh, the tail is long. Is it as long as the body? Is it, um, you know, how much of this do I want to include? And uh, so I've gone all the way around, uh, and it looks looks pretty good. Again, straight lines only. And now I'm going over it one more time, adding a little bit more detail and cleaning it up a little bit better. And here I'm putting on one of the uh, speared horns it has. It kind of looks like a unicorn. Maybe this is a prehistoric uh, unicorn, right? Before they were horses, they were weird-looking lizards with shields on their head. Who knows? paleontologists know and they'd say it's crazy and as I go around here I'm, I'm keeping in mind that the, the bottom of his stomach is all a flat line for the most part it needs to have um, it, it needs to have long lines to sort of indicate that at the bottom of the torso there's a separation a definitive separation and not broken up lines like um, like sometimes it happens it sometimes happens Sometimes I put a line right there in the separation where the stomach turns into the legs. And as they go around, back to the tail, and here I'm going to perfect it a bit more. And again, it's okay to go outside of your envelope. The envelope is just a starting point, and eventually you will erase it. So the pencil I'm using here is, um, I believe it's a B. When I'm on camera, I use a B so you guys can see my uh, pencil marks easier. And that little silver eraser that I use that I absolutely love is a Mono Zero, which will allow you precision in erasing. Uh, you should have two erasers, one for just generically erasing a large area, and then another one for just the precision work. Because when you get down to really knowing how to draw, I believe you should be as familiar with erasing and perfecting your lines as you are with the actual pencil itself. These long tips that I have on here are, uh, I call them fancy pencils. Um, sharpen them with a, a box cutter. Kids use your, use it with their parents' permission, of course. But um, it allows me to not press too hard, not damage the paper, and I can feel the paper better. The graphite is very rigid, and I can feel the texture of the paper better than a regular pencil. All right, on to Pikachu, and here I am with my um, my envelope for him. This is a five-sided polygon, and feels pretty good. Again, I am going quickly. When you first learn to draw, go fast. Just 
knock it out and make sure that these drawings are done fairly accurately but it's about building speed and building confidence because there is no way you can crank out a lot of drawings without getting better sometimes knowing where to start is is not a science and it's a guess so I, I don't really know where to jump in because on one point of this envelope is an ear, on the other side is an ear, and then you kind of touch the foot that kind of pops out in the lower left hand corner, and, and it has a zigzag lightning bolt tail that goes all the way out to the side. So I, I have to just jump in somewhere and get going. But if you hesitate and you think about it too much, part of your brain that says, I know everything, can actually really um, ruin your day. So you need to just draw quick and end up just having sort of a reaction to the paper and what you're seeing. Because what you're seeing isn't necessarily what your brain is telling you You is there. Um, sometimes we wake up, we look over our shoulder, and there's a little tiny like a mark on the wall. And our brain automatically, automatically goes, oh my god, there's a spider on the wall. And, and then you're panicking when really it's just, maybe it's just a nail hole and it's just a shadow of that nail hole on the wall. So you have to really start building up um, a muscle memory and a, a reaction to drawing and what you see. Just get the idea out, get the concept out, get this character on paper, and then you can slow down and look, is it right, is it wrong? How close am I? Can I fix it? Or should I just scrap it and try again? And in the beginning, there's nothing wrong with you scrapping it and trying again. Again, outside of the envelope, that's okay. My block-ins are not 100% accurate. If I were to take my time and really slow down, uh, if you watch any of my portrait tutorials, you'll see that I really, really nitpick the initial lines to make sure they're in the right place and I know where things are. Portraiture is extremely difficult to do, uh, even more so when it's someone you know. So you really want to make sure that those lines, those first lines, that that blocking is 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 on an accurate path. Because if you don't start with accuracy on something like a portrait, it is going to be a pain. But in the beginning, stay away from portraits. Just do these little animals. Do silhouettes. Draw five, ten of them a day. So when I drew his eyes, I did, my drawing kind of looks like he's, he's wearing a mask. And those lines are so that I have an idea of the same, of, of scale. So the eyes are the same size and that they're on the same plane. So it doesn't end up looking like a melted candle. And it looks like that ear pops outside of the envelope and that's fine. I think even looking at it now, I could have brought that cheek down further, but I'm going to, you know, maybe I'll round them out a little bit more and cleaning up the line. Eyes are a little bit bigger. Get the nose in. All right, one more time all the way around. And Pikachu is done, and here I am erasing the block in, sorry, the envelope. Erasing that envelope. Because once I, sometimes I draw lines that will eventually disappear because it's like scaffolding. It helps me, helps me get that um, structure into place, and then it's no longer needed in the end. And on to my third, using these little wedges to make sure that I have things at line of sight, or sight size is another way to put it. Probably a better way to put it. So everything is lined up. 
And the last one I'm going to be doing over here is, these are images from my website that I had provided for my kids when we were working through Zoom for my students. This is a Spinosaur. It is a huge, giant, scary, aquatic creature that was glorified in, I think it was Jurassic Park 3, ran around and snapped the neck of a T-Rex. Spinosaur, as I look at him, top of the sail, top, tip of the nose, bottom of the jaw, all the way down to the foot that's on the ground, back of the tail. And again, side size is great because I can bring over that literal width of my drawing. And, okay, what's the distance from the tip of the nose to the sail? Mark it. Okay, that's where it is. And then connect that line. Yep, looks good. Maybe a little further out. If I drop down from the sail and I go over to the foot, it's, it's a bit of a distance, so that measured up. Now I'm going to put in an estimate of the bottom of the jaw, and I'm going to skip some of those feet that aren't touching the ground, all three of those feet that aren't touching the ground. This thing ran around like T-Rex. It had longer arms. So the one foot that's running and the two forearms that are up in the air, I'm going to ignore that with my envelope. And here I go. I'm jumping right into the blocking. Uh, just start somewhere, somewhere that makes sense. And I'm not doing all the little details, not the indentations on the calf or the indentations on the leg or the little claw, the dew claw on the back. Uh, okay, here comes up. It is a curved line. It looks like a curved line, but I'm still going to use straight lines. Always using straight lines in my blockings because they're so much easier to correct. And the difference from the envelope to the block in most obviously is that they're just shorter lines. So with every pass that you do, envelope looks good into the block in, shorter lines. You're going to use shorter lines. Then the block in looks good, so it's time for some details, big level details, shorter and shorter and shorter. And I'm just going to keep working on it. As I get more detail in here, now I'm going to guess as to where the legs go. And here's the running leg. And again, I am rushing. I'm rushing these for one reason alone. As a beginner, just draw quickly. I can't emphasize that enough. Just draw quickly. Um, if you take your time on a bad drawing, it's going to hurt your self-esteem. You're going to get frustrated with it. But if you keep drawing these blockings and you follow the press or the process, straight lines, sweep your lines, uh, go from the envelope to the big lines and the blocking to the shorter lines, get the details in last. And... Really, don't sweat the details. Just get the shape down because here I am, and this, this doesn't look like a turtle to me. I mean, it kind of looks like a turtle now that I say that, doesn't it? But really, if you're a dinosaur fan, you're going to know that this is a Spinosaur. And I'm going around changing more, a little bit more detail. The lines will move. All lines can move until you're really confident. And the more you draw things, the more you can measure them triangulate with your pencil, use a ruler, use, use a measuring, uh, measuring stick or measuring rod and you're going to be able to tell where things go. And little by little my drawing becomes a little bit more correct. I don't like using the word perfect because, uh, you know, it, on the other hand, if you're a perfectionist, this is a great way to break it. Just draw quickly and move on. Draw quickly and move on and break that cycle of being a perfectionist because it doesn't serve you at all while you're learning something. You need to be free to make mistakes. And really, you don't want to focus on the mistakes. You want to focus on what you did right. And the process is what is right. And here I am getting more details in and more details. Well, look, I'm about done with this video, guys. And I'm really glad that you were here to, um, to hang out and uh, participate. Really focus on the envelope into the block in. Do a few of these, five of these, day, six a day, ten a day. And do it on scratch paper so you can just throw it out. And if there's one that you really like, yeah, hang it on the fridge. Mail it to grandma. I don't know. Um, make a button out of it and put a slogan in the middle. But your drawing skills can only get better from blocking boot camp. And uh, once you jump into it, 
Just let the method take over, put some music on, draw as fast as you can, envelope, sweep big lines for the block in, and then go around it and add some details, and you can always, you can always add a little bit more detail with every pass that you do. And that's the general foundation for realism. Look, thanks for joining me, guys. I'm really, really excited to be sharing this process with you. I've seen magnificent things happening from my students in fifth and sixth grade. So good luck. Thanks for watching.